I'm Azus, and this video is going to look at stickers and capsules that I think have good potential as short-term investments after the major sticker sale ends, and it's also going to have a quick look at what Christmas 2017 has done to skin sales on the Steam market. We'll jump right into it and start looking at the stickers and the capsules. So when I talk about short-term returns, what I mean is literally as little as a couple of days. So this is, this is um the hype driven return which I've talked about in previous videos in fact I'll link it in the description below so you can see what I'm talking about I will talk about longer term investments in a different video and I'll go through that in depth but this just focuses on really short term returns so getting your money back after a couple of days so we'll start with the regular team stickers now these are what I generally consider to be the best investment if you want a short term return and if you look on screen you can see the volumes of the different stickers on the Steam market at the moment now the exact order here isn't too important because the volumes are quite low so they may move around a little bit but what I would recommend is thinking of it in terms of what I call the 100 club which is Tai Lu, Space Soldiers, Phase, 100 Thieves and Cloud9 and the, the, the teams below which is SK, G2, Astralis, VP etc. Now I think overall this is going to be fairly representative of how these stickers are going to be in terms of demand and this is the reason why if you look at the top selling six regular Krakow stickers, they match up quite well to the, the order of the same teams on the, the Boston list. So if you, take, if you take out all the stickers that aren't represented in the Krakow sample, you can see you've got the same culprits in essentially the same order. So I think this gives us a good indicator of which stickers are going to be the most demanded at the Boston Major. Now, demand on its own doesn't necessarily tell us heaps, it's also about supply. So if you look at the Krakow phase sticker, about 3,000 of these sell per day, but the price is only 21 cents, and it's simply because so many were bought during the sticker sales. But, if we look at their price history, we can see that they did go up to as much as 38 cents shortly after the major, and this is even when the market was completely flooded with these stickers. So, what this sort of indicates is that if you have a high enough demand, you can still get a bit of a short-term hype return on high demand stickers. It's the same deal with the Krakow Cloud9 stickers. They're the second highest volume Krakow sticker, but they spent quite a while at 38 cents before dropping. But it's not the same with a sticker like Gambit or, or Navi, which much lower volume, they never got above 32 cents. And even then, they were there only very briefly. So in conclusion, if you go for the highest demand stickers, often you should be able to get a bit of a return even if the stickers on the whole end up flopping and don't do very well. And it's worth keeping in mind, these Atlantis stickers are much nicer than the PGL Krakow stickers. But it does leave the question of which sticker specifically to go to, and I'm going to suggest that all the stickers in what I call the 100 Club could be winners, and I'll go through each of them individually and explain why I think there's enough demand behind them to get the result we want. So first of all we've got Tai Lu, it's a new team, very hyped. I know the immediate thought that probably occurs to people is that there should be a lot of demand for these because of China, but I think there may all be a lot of demand from Westerners as well because they're a cool team, we haven't seen the stickers before, they've probably got quite a few fans in the West anyway because they're a bit of a breakout, they humiliated the Renegades a few times at the, the Asian Miners, and even I like them now because they've finally stopped taking that title away from my countrymen. So Tyloo is probably going to be a winner. Secondly we've got Space Soldiers. now. It's also their first time at a major. It's a cool looking sticker. Ironically, I did say there probably wouldn't be much demand for it in my sticker scraping video, which I should have checked before saying that, and now I look really stupid. But nonetheless, this one looks like it's going to do pretty well. Maybe the demand's being driven prim primarily by Turkish buyers, maybe not. Either way, people want these stickers. I think it may be a good investment. Next up, we've got Phase. Now, they always sell a heap of stickers, so I probably don't need to explain that one too much. We've also got Cloud9, another popular team and a big seller. But with Cloud9, I should add, just to, just to, as, an, as an extra, they haven't had many stickers recently. They missed Cologne 2016 in Atlanta, and obviously Atlanta had very, very nice stickers. And they've got the PGL stickers, but they aren't that great. So there's really a scarcity of good Cloud9 stickers. You have to go back to MLG Columbus to get some good ones. And they're quite expensive now, they're about a dollar each, so I think there's going to be particularly lots of demand for Cloud9 at this major, because they've finally got another cool looking sticker that doesn't cost a fortune. And finally we've got 100 Thieves, which is the older Mortals core, cool new sticker, cool team name, the demand reflects this, 
I think this one's going to do particularly well if the team performs well too. So that's something to keep an eye on. They got to the final for the last major. I don't think that's likely to happen again, but you never know. But, you know, even a, a high placing finish could be quite good for this sticker's demand. In my opinion, I, I'm speculating, but I think that may happen if they do well. So those are the teams I'd recommend focusing on if you want to try and get a quick return after the sticker sale ends. Two key points on this. First of all, you need to keep a very close eye on the prices of the stickers when you're doing this because the opportunity to sell may be quite brief. If you look at the PGL stickers, with some of these stickers, you only had a couple of days to get rid of them at a profit. Secondly, you need to be willing to accept that the return may only be five or 10 cents. And I know that sounds bad, but it's worth keeping in mind that a 5% return on a 25 cent sticker is still a 20% return. And if you get that over a couple of days, that's pretty good, but it's just a matter of keeping in mind that you may not necessarily double your money. Hopefully you will, but you might not. And if you wait too long to sell, hoping for the return to go up, it could backfire. Now, moving on to stickers and capsules, we have autographs, capsules, and hollow and foil team sticker capsules. I won't focus on the individual stickers in these capsules as short-term investments. I actually don't think they're particularly good short-term investments. Um, I'll do a separate video on long-term investments where I do look at them and I'll explain why I think they're not great as short-term investments. But in this video, I will look at the capsules as short-term investments. So we've got three team sticker capsules and three autograph capsules. Which one should you buy? Well, I'm not feeling very optimistic about the autograph capsules simply because they went very well last major and generally that tends to lead to things being over-invested in in the following major. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean there won't be a hype bubble. There, there may well could be, but it does make it harder for one to take place. And, and conversely, it is worth noticing that the order of stickers in these capsules are nicer than the Krakow ones. So that's a point in their favor, but I wouldn't recommend investing in them unless it's clear that there's less of these capsules on the market after the sales ended than there was at the PGL major, which is something we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens. As for the team sticker capsules though, I'm a lot more optimistic about them simply because there's a lot of stickers in these that people will probably be excited for that we haven't seen before or that where there aren't a ready supply of nice foils and hollows available for them. For instance, we've got new teams, Space Soldiers and Tai Lu in the Minor Challenges capsule. We've got the, the, the ever popular Phase and Cloud 9 in the Returning Challenges capsule. And we've got 100 Thieves, VP, Astralis, and the Legends capsules. So there's nice stuff all over the place. And they are much nicer stickers than Krakow or Cologne 2016. Maybe not as nice as Atlanta. I don't think they are quite as nice, but they're still fairly good. Moreover, consider this. If you look at Counter-Strike's player base, it's currently rebounding. And I think this is going to carry over into January and fuel quite a bit of demand for very expensive stickers. And what is interesting is if you look at the last couple of majors that have been really good for sticker investments, Columbus and Atlanta, they were both not only early in the year, like this one, but they were also at a time when the player base was growing or, or at a strong point at, at the very least. So I think that bodes quite well for these capsules. So I suppose to summarize this, the items that are most excited for are the team sticker capsules and high volume normal team stickers. Now to finish up, I'm going to have a look at what the Christmas demand has done to the market. It's just past its peak now, so I think it would be a, a nice time to look at how high it got. So we're going to look at the five top selling classified skins on CS Grow to illustrate how much of an effect it's had on the market compared to before the winter sale started, which is going to be our baseline. So to start, if we look at the fuel tested AK red line, its sales went from about 1000 to about 2500 and its price went up about a dollar. And I know that doesn't sound like a very big increase, but it is actually a 15% increase overall, which, which is re respectable, not groundbreaking, but respectable. Now, secondly, we've got the field tested m 1 s Decimator, which went up from about 500 units sold to about 950 units sold. So not as much of an increase as the red line, but its price went up a, a larger percentage. It went up about 17%. Then we've got the field tested Glock Water Elemental, this one was really dramatic actually. It went up from 500 units sold to about 1,500 units sold. So tripled in volume and its price went up 23%. The field tested Desolate Space was also one of these skins. Its volume sold went from 
about 400 units to about 1,000 units, and its price went up about 18%. And finally, there's the field-tested Orp Fever Dream, which its units went up from about 350 to 770 sold, and its price went up about 17%. And one last interesting little stat, the price of Spectrum 2 cases went up about 40% over the same period. And the total number of units sold on December the 26th peaked at about 20,000 higher than usual. So I think I know where lots of kids put their Christmas money. But the main question all this raises for me is, so we've seen a sort of an average price increase of about 17%. What I'm interested in is, Will this price increase be sustained? It was last year. The question is, will it this year? So once the winter sales over in January, I'm gonna come back with another video looking at this question in detail with lots of stats, and we'll see where things are at. But anyway, I think that's enough for now. I'll have a video out on long-term sticker investments soon. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. I'm happy to answer any questions you have as well. As always, trust the numbers, not your guts. I'm Jesus, thanks for watching. See ya.